Hello everyone, I'm Karen Das. And I'm Vinay Harichan. Of the Cutlass Magazine. <laughs> So this is the star, right? They're doing it like this, right? I'm asking top so. So Benay, talk about a conundrum this past week because we had words that were head scratchers for some people. One such word was Jagabad. Now some were able to identify this easily with no prompting because it was a word that they grew up hearing from their parents or the grandparents. It was used in their homes, always used outside. The younger generation would know this word Jagabad because politicians are using it now uh, when they just want to throw pikong at the, um, the oppositions or so on. But the Jagabad, now there's some ambiguity with this being, the origin of this word being a poetry word here in Trinidad. Now, one dictionary has it as probably in the poetry Jagabad. Um, mm. But we gathered that it has something to do with a promiscuous woman or a prostitute. <sighs> we couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Jagabad or Jagabad, there's kind of two different ways that some people seem to pronounce it. Typically as a woman who they'd say a bad moral character, promiscuous woman. A w one person, when I asked them, gave me a very specific context of a woman who might hang around at a bar where a lot of men frequent. So women that might be in certain um, social situations who might accept money for favors, things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you were saying, there seems to be confusion or uncertainty about whether or not it's a Bhojpuri word or whether or not it's a French Creole word. Because in French Creole, you might have synonyms like, we you know, Jamet woman or Jamet. Mm -hmm. And then in, you know, Trinidad Hindustani, there's a lot of other words like maybe Sakchuli or Sautin or Sawatia, all of those words that kind of are used in a similar context. But as you mentioned, there is one dictionary and one linguist uh, by name of, I think, Lee Swiner, or Liz Lee Swiner. Swiner, yeah, who has it classified as a Trinidad Bhojpuri word. And considering how standardized it seems to have become the Nawa dialect, especially with old Indian people, it seems likely that would be the case. So Jagabad, for those who found that to be an odd word or you're not familiar with it, but it is, it, it's a, a word that was used here in Trinidad and it's used in Calypso. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure there are other songs with this word Jagabad. Have you ever come across any songs? No, I haven't come across any songs um, using it. Um, as you mentioned, outside of the Calypso, and some people might think that the use of it in Calypso might be an indication that it's not a Hindustani word, but I think a lot of people probably remember, you know, a lot of Calypso songs or Soka songs that use Om Shanti Om or Indrani or Marajan and okay. things like that. Yeah. All right. Another word, well, two words actually, but this falls under onomatopoeia. So it's a word that comes from sound, cho cho. Um, so when you hear it, it's like cho cho, you kind of you kind of conjure up an image in your mind that it has something to do with something that's loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Chao Chao, as you mentioned, is a, as you say, onomatopoeia. And previous linguists like Visham Bimal and um, Peggy Mohan and, um, and you know, other linguists who study the language have noted that by the older people, Jiao Jiao was used as a way to represent the sound of dogs barking. Mm -hmm. However, it seems to, over time, have shifted in context to be used for um, unnecessarily quarreling, fighting. And in my family, I have relatives who would say, oh, it has too much jiao jiao going on at this party, mm -hmm. I'm leaving. And in that context, it means chaos, mm -hmm. confusion, too much high energy. But the kind of through line between all of those contexts is the use of noise. So whether it's the older people using it to refer to the sound of dogs barking, or younger generations using it to refer to the noise of people quarreling or arguing or fighting, that seems to be a common theme there. So jiao jiao, you could use it for dog barking, or you could also use it as, you know, too much chaos or confusion or perhaps bacchanal at a lime and something noisy.
Yeah, so that was Bhaganath, the sound of Bhaganath. Mm -hmm. So, um, the Lee's Weiner Dictionary has Kukku Chow Chow. So, maybe you've come across mm -hmm. that. Um, you might have heard Kukku Chow Chow, which would be the sound of dogs barking. But, yes, yeah, so a brawl. But you know that it is so for some people, I don't know, this, it's, it's, like, it's like rock music. For some people, that is music. And for other people, that would be classified as chow chow. It's just like loud. It is too much. It is overwhelming. It might be a bit unpleasant. But chow chow, that is a context in which it's used. So now we've learned something new. If you uh, found this one to be strange as well, chow chow. So the next time you go to an event, and you can't keep up with the noise and the excitement and all that kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Chow um, so, Yeah, I was just going to say that some people might want to know why they have probably heard the word borkela or borke for bark. And it's important mm -hmm. to distinguish that kukurwa borkela or kukur borkela means the dog is barking. Borke means to bark or make a noise. But that's the actual verb, or, whereas chow chow is more of a onomatopoeia that represents yeah. the noise of that barking. Yes. So, cho cho. We moved on to our Trinidad Bhojpuri phrase or expression. Ham na jani ka hoy. So, some were able to get as far as ham na jani and then for the rest of it, it literally was ham na jani. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. But ham na jani ka hoy was mm -hmm. our phrase. Yes, yeah, so if you break it up, a lot of people know ham na jani means I don't know. Ham meaning I, na being not to know, and jani meaning to know. So mm -hmm. ham na jani ka hui, ka is what, and hui is what will happen. So ham na jani ka hui, I don't know what will happen. Some people did get it a little confused in the comments, so they were saying, I don't know what happened. Now, if you're saying that, it'd be Hamna Jani Kabhail, which we had done in weeks previous, but this is specific to the future context. Mm -hmm. So you had Kabhail, uh, there's Kaula, maybe you've come across that people asking you, um, Kaula, so what's happening? And uh, of course, now Kahoy, what will happen? And for us here in Trinidad, I mean, this is something that uh, we say from time to time. I don't know what will happen. Me know what happened. So basically, it's the same thing. Hamna Jani, Kahoi. So yeah. that was our phrase. Yeah, and if you're a perpetually confused person, you could always say Hamna Jani, Kabal, Kahula, and Kahoi. What will happen? <laughs> And then, well, you would know after that, hopefully, uh, we moved on to another one, Silwai, Silwai. And this, too, was for some people um, a little confusing. So we had messages coming in saying stitching or sewing. Udai of Lucknow immediately identified stitching. Nalini immediately identified stitching. Uh, some thought it's the, the name of someone who sews. Um, others say it is sewing. So, and, and some folks even identified si why uh, without the L. So there was still why and there's si why. So what has been your experience with this word? Yeah, so I understand those two words, so why and still why to be synonyms for stitching or mm -hmm. sewing. Now, if you wanted to actually use the verb to stitch or to sew, that would be sewe or silwe, but the y ending means that it's the act of doing something and it's more of the noun form. So silwai, sewai is stitching, sewing. Sewe, silwe is to stitch and to sew. And I know some people are mentioning, you know, it could be a seamstress or it could be a tailor. There is another word that I think you had covered previously, darji. Darji would be a male seamster. And then Darjin is actually a female seamstress, or seamstress and plus. seamstress, yeah. yeah. Seamstress would be Darjin. So it could be possible in some dialects, maybe they use so why to be the actual person itself, but it seems more to be related to the actual act of sewing or stitching. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I was curious about that one because I too wasn't sure. But for those, again, who found this to be a new word, by looking at the comments, you would be able to deduce it had something to do with sewing, stitching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah if, if you're a seamstress and you ever you know don't want to sew someone's clothes you could always say Hamna mangi I don't want to sew your clothes so if you ever need a phrase to you know tell someone there <laughs> well, like, please sew my clothes um, okay so we move on to our final word for the week which was a food related word or something that you'd find in your kitchen somewhere in your house matki Matki on Friday. Yeah, so matki, or you might even be familiar with the versions mataki or matkia, because as we know in Hindustani, there's so many varieties to say one thing. So mm -hmm. mataki, matki, matkia, that's a specifically a clay pot or storage con container that would be used for ghee or ghee or makan or butter. So lots of people might be familiar with the image of baby Krishna with his hands sticking in a pot and he's, you know, taking the butter, the makan. That's why they call him the makan mm -hmm. chur, the butter thief. So that pot that you see there, that's a matki or matkia. And so you may have heard it in songs. Ruplaji has that song, Dehia Pigai, where he says mataki pori, meaning the, you know, the butter mm -hmm. container, or the clay pot holding the butter has smashed. <laughs> Or you might even hear Matkia in that song by Kanchan Radha Kunheya. And so it exists there in our music, and I think a lot of people might be familiar with the older people that use the Mataki to store their Gyu or their Dahi or, you know, their Makan. Yeah, thank you so much for those messages. Uh, some of you sent in images as well. Yasmin, Yasmin shared a beautiful memory of um, uh, little storage containers and storage pots for Anshar um, growing up. Uh, and she used uh, some other words as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that picture that typically is used for Acha, it's known as Gaila. Mm -hmm. And so Gaila is very, it seems to be specific for Kuchilo Acha, the same way that another word that people have covered before is gaga or gagari or gagaria mm -hmm. gaga seems to be a pot that's specific for water or pani so pani ke gaga a water pot uh, makan ke mataki or giu ke mataki butter container and then achar or kuchila ke gaila a storage container for kuchila or achar Great. So uh, we have uh, done really well this past week. We learned some new ones, uh, some of us. And so uh, we're making phrases as we go along. We're having conversations and uh, beautiful memories being shared. So this has been another wonderful week uh, with you, Vinay. And uh, Vinay represents the Cutlass Magazine. Tell us how folks can get in touch with you. Yes, you can follow me at Cutlass Magazine on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. And also, if you want to message me, you can just message cutlasspodcast at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've noted that uh, many of you have also been sharing words with us. And even though you're not sure if it's a proper spelling, if it's a proper pronunciation, that's fine. This is how we all learn. So uh, mm -hmm. keep sending us uh, those notes and uh, we'll try our very best to keep up with you. We're in a very auspicious time of the year for so many people. For Christians observing Lent, uh, for those in the Hindu community observing Navratam or Navratri, we also in that period of fasting, uh, known as the holy month of Ramadan. So on behalf of the KDC, Shubha Navratri, Ramadan Mubarak to you and yours. Mm -hmm. Yes, greetings to everyone. I hope this is a very, you know, peaceful and prosperous time for everybody observing. All right. So until next time, then I catch up. <laughs>